For those of you wondering, the purpose of the butt flap, as far as I know, is to offer a little bit of extra cushioning when you have to sit on the ground or on concrete. And I kind of wish I had one right now. Hey there, Chaotic Cryptids. It's your boy, the Chupacabra, here once again with this week's video. And I'm finally fucking back, and I'm glad to do another DIY clothes sort of showcase. I think, I've, I don't even fucking know how many I've done at this point, but this is like the backbone of my channel, me showing my projects to all of you, giving you ideas, getting your feedback on my own ideas. It's the first video I ever did, so let's get fucking into it. Also, stay tuned until the end because I got some cool announcements for you. So, let's get fucking started. So to get us started, we got fucking band t-shirts. What band, you might ask? My fucking band! So we got, for those of you who don't know, I'm in a punk band called Brain Farm, and we are based out of North Carolina. We, we've, been, we've been, you know, starting doing fucking shows lately, and we officially have official Brain Farm t-shirts. I just fucking, <laughs> fucking blew my curtain. I put this on my fucking window to film. We make our own t-shirts. This is the first one that I ever made for this band. This is more a more recent one. Uh, I use a shit ton of stencils, which I really like because it allows me to, you know, sort of play around with the arrangement, uh, do whatever fucking stencil arrangement I want to do. No two shirts come out the same. This one's a little more minimalistic. This one's everything is all over the fucking place here. There's a whole bunch of neon green, some black, some fucking radioactive symbols. And I'm really excited because the guys and I have officially agreed that we're going to buy up a whole bunch of these, you know, blank t-shirts in a few different sizes, make them and fucking sell them at our shows. So if you're gonna be coming to one of our shows in the fucking future and you wanna buy a t-shirt, or who knows, maybe we'll even set up a fucking store online or something, then keep your eyes peeled for that. I will give you more information, but I was super excited. For this, I used stencils and spray paint. Super fucking easy. It was like one coat of spray paint. Like, don't use, uh, use less than you think you'll need. And that was my experience. I made one, it wasn't for this band, it was for a previous one, like, a year ago, and I used way too much spray paint, and it ended up looking fucking horrible. This looked cool, I wore this to our first ever show, I actually have this, um, fucking <laughs> tradition that every time my band hits some kind of milestone, I'm going to put a burn mark on this shirt, and I intend to keep to that, so that's that one, and this one. Moving on in the t-shirt department, you've got this one. This is one, uh, I've made it a while ago. Shit, fuck, I'm sorry about that. I keep moving the exposure. I made this a while ago. I don't think I ever showed it off. I have this professor who's really into punk and he loved this one. He actually pointed it out to me that he found a picture in this old magazine from the 90s of this dude wearing it. And so I was thinking, did I show them this? So if I did, I'm sorry. I probably did on tons of, on like my Instagram and my TikTok, but I'm not sure if I showed it on the channel. So. It says, this is definitely not a Fugazi shirt. And for those who don't get the joke, basically Fugazi, they refuse to do their own merchandising. Uh, they wouldn't sell t-shirts or anything like that. And so any merchandise that you would get from Fugazi was bootleg. And so that you had a whole bunch of like Joker bootlegger guys that they would fucking sell t-shirts that said stuff like, this is not a Fugazi t-shirt. This isn't Fugazi. This is not, Fug you know, that's the kind of that, that shit. And so I... Uh, made my own as sort of a tribute to that. Actually, fun fact, there was one dude who was selling a Fugazi shirt that said, this is not a Fugazi shirt, but it looked like, it looked exactly like the merchandise cover. And it got to be so popular that fucking the singer from Fugazi actually endorsed that dude. And so some of his earnings went towards a charity and his shirt was actually endorsed by the band, which is awesome. But also check this out. Something else I wanted to show you guys. A really inexpensive way of looking like raggedy fucking punk or crust punk or however you want is to just tear your fucking shirts. This one has seen some wear. I have just gone at this with scissors, razor blades, knives. I have fucking put scorch marks in this. I'm not sure if you can, if I can find one real quick, but basically I will like turn on my lighter, hold it up to the fabric, let it catch and let it burn for a bit, blow it out, and then just pull on it, and it'll fucking unravel, and like the scorch, I'll just brush the scorch bits off, and then you got another cool looking hole, and that's just how I fucking do this one. This one, I think is the one that I've abused the most out of all my t-shirts. Uh, it's missing a chunk of the shoulder, it's got holes in the collar, and at the bottom hem, it is absolutely fucking trash, and I'm going to keep wearing it until it falls off. Now, moving forward, I got something for all you fucking geeks out there. 
I have recently really gotten back into comic collecting, reading comics, watching the TV shows, and so I've made a few different pieces of merch, uh, DIY merch, that is like more in the geek area. And this is just sort of to show you, you don't have to really adhere to just punk. Whatever merch you want, if you don't want to pay extravagant amounts of money for it, just make it yourself. Go get a fucking cheap ass t-shirt. Go do whatever you want. It, hell, if you want to make your own cosplay, I'm making my own fucking cosplay. I might show it off sometime here. But if you want to just make some cool geek merch, make it for yourself if you want to. And so this is a Reverse Flash t-shirt. I've been really into The Flash lately, into the comics, into the CW TV show. I'm only on season three, so no fucking spoilers. I'm only on season three, so I don't know if it gets worse or better. So for those of you, if it got worse, you know, don't look at me like that. I have not gotten that far yet. Uh, I'm halfway through season three right now. It's really good so far. I love all the different comic characters they bring in. And so I really wanted to pay tribute to... Not necessarily my favorite villain, but Tom Cavanaugh is my favorite actor from that series and one of my favorite actors of all time. And his reverse flash was fantastic. So I was really excited to just fucking, you know, have that piece of merch. And so I just kind of, I, I used a stencil for this uh, with the, I stenciled the outline and then I just uh, freehanded in the, the interior in black. And I think it turned out pretty fucking sweet and I love wearing this. Further into the geek sort of area and uh, sort of going into the cosplay. For those of you who don't know, in the Spider-Verse, the various different spider totems, Spider-Men of the various different, you know, uh, multiverse uh, universes, there was one Spider-Man, his name is Hobart Brown. He's on Earth 138, if I'm not mistaken, and he is a punk rocker. He's a street punk in the Bronx, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's Bronx. And his whole deal is that in that universe, Osborne is the president and he's leading an anarchist revolution against Osborne. Uh, it's him, Captain Anarchy, who's, who is uh, Carl Morgenthau. For those of you who are watching Falcon and Winter Soldier, Carl Morgenthau in uh, Earth-138 is Captain Anarchy, which is the Earth-138 version of Captain America. And the Incredible Hulk, uh, who's played by, who's Banner. Banner in that universe is the Incredible Hulk and he's got like a... Hulk with a mohawk is what I, what I love about him. And so I'm making, I've made um, Spider-Punk's vest. I'm slowly making the whole costume because I want to wear it. It's sort of my own version. It's not exactly the same because his spider suit is very much like kind of, depending on the time, because sometimes he gets really fucked up in battle, but sort of kind of clean cut sometimes. So mine is supposed to be, mine is more of like a street punk put together a spider suit. So it'll look a little more raggedy but it'll be recognizable and I'm excited to wear it to a convention. And, you know, going on with that whole theme of me taking the costume and sort of making it my own, this is the Spider-Punk vest, but I sort of made it a little different. So you got like the, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and the New York City hardcore uh, logo, you know, stylization on the back there with the black spider. You got the back studded all the hell. That took a fucking long time, let me tell you. Haven't counted, but it's a pretty high stud count just on these shoulders alone. Uh, at the bottom here, I have this, like, the womb, you know, the old-fashioned comic book uh, impact words that you'd see from, like, the fucking old comics from back in the day. And then on the front, I did I put some flannel on the shoulders, uh, you know, sort of decorate there. And I've got some buttons that I bought from uh, this convention that I was at. It was a comic convention, but they have, like, these little odds and ends, uh, you know, tents where they'll sell different things. And so I have... Misfits, Famous Monsters, I have uh, Medusa, yeah, Medusa's head, I have this little, I actually painted this one myself, I painted it black, black acrylic paint, and then I sort of did the little, like, raggedy Spider-Man logo on this one button, down here it's a skull that says sit on my face, I love that joke, I see it in patches and buttons, and so I needed to have it when I saw it, um, I've got fucking Sonic Youth, and Elvira, love Elvira, love her movie, and I love her TV spots. Um, for those of you who haven't seen either the Elvira, Mistress of the Dark movie, or the 13 Nights with Elvira, she's just got a great personality. Uh, she's really fucking funny, and I just, I love her whole aesthetic. And then on the collar, you've got this X-Men um, pin right here. I love the X-Men. They, I think overall, they're my favorite group from Marvel Comics. And towards the bottom here... You have Harley Quinn because universe crossover. Who the fuck cares? I don't... Honestly, I want some fucking uh, holier-than-thou nerd to point out that Harley Quinn and Spider-Man aren't in the same universe just so I can, you know, make him, like, shit himself or whatever because, you know, elitism happens everywhere. 
And then you got towards the bottom here, you got a patch that says Magneto was right. Uh, Scott Summers said that, by the way. Fucking Cyclops said that. So, you know, I Magneto, especially the fucking Michael Fassbender Magneto from the newer movies, I love seeing him, especially in first class when he was hunting Nazis. It was fucking badass. And then to go with that, this is sort of the second part of the costume that I made. It is the Spider-Man part of the spider suit, but instead of an actual spider suit, it's just a really fucking torn up t-shirt that I made with a spider logo on it. Really awesome spider logo. I stenciled this and then I drew the lines going over it. As you can tell, they're not centered. Um, that was an accident. I was trying to get them a little centered, but I fucked up and so they're very uneven, but who the hell cares? I am slowly tearing this thing the hell up. It is already, you know, all torn up. I wanted to sort of make it look like I had been scratched by something, maybe by the Green Goblin or fucking Craven the Hunter or who the hell knows. Just, you know, wearing it the hell out. I don't know if you can see those, but it's got like, it's got burn holes. It's got tear holes. It's going to be all torn up into shit by the time I actually wear it as part of the costume. I will definitely do an unveiling of the full costume when it's ready. I'm super fucking excited. I love Hobart Brown's Spider-Man. I love like the idea of a hero as street level as Spider-Man being a fucking anarchist revolutionary. I dig that. I don't know if, because I've, I'm not sure I know everything there's to know about that Spider-Man. Maybe he's not as well represented as an anarchist punk as I'm hoping he is. But I do hope that they do a good job portraying what that is like because I just love the premise of that. I love, I hate Osborn uh, as like the whole fascist rich guy thing. So I'm excited to see a, a continuum where someone is actually actively trying to fuck him over. And so the last piece from my like geek DIY punk collection is one actually inspired. For those of you who read the Harley Quinn comics, there is a um, continuum story called Harley Quinn and the Skull Bags, and that is when Harley goes undercover, forms a punk band uh, called Harley Quinn and the Skull Bags. And so I took inspiration from her punk look. I'd love to maybe cosplay that someday, but I basically am making uh, a half black, half red uh, pair of pants. This is a this is the uh, this is a pair of Michael Kors pants that I found at the thrift store for fucking like four dollars. And I'm taking flannel and a red t-shirt fabric and I'm going all over one leg with it. And then after I've covered the entire leg, I'm gonna go over it with some accents, like some black diamonds and shit like that. Just cause I love, Harley's my favorite DC character of all time. I love her character arc, her getting away from Joker, her badassery finding herself and all the shit that she gets up to with Poison Ivy and with her like gang of Harleys and the Birds of Prey. And so it's just, it's really cool. And so that's really that that's all there is to it is I just took fabric and I'm covering the leg. It's tedious a little bit because I'll fuck up and then I'll have to do the whole thing again. But honestly, it's not as hard as I was expecting. So like if maybe you can't afford trip pants or you don't want to pay all that money for trip pants and you just have a pair of pants you found at the fucking, um, I don't know, dollar store or a fucking thrift store and you would like to, you know, make your own thrift, make your own uh, trip pants, go to the fucking thrift store, get yourself some flannel and just cover the whole thing. Like cut it to size. Actually on the back here, I actually had to cut it to specifics to meet the edges of the pocket. And then I'm going to cut one piece to fit over the pocket. So like, it's not that hard. I suck at apparel, that, that kind of stuff. And I did this so you can fucking do it too. So that's, that's how this is an ongoing process. I'll show you when it's done, but I'm really excited about this one. Okay, and so going away from the nerdy, geeky stuff, uh, back into the more like punk-based DIY projects, I've got two things to show you uh, as far as like, you know, below the waist shit. This one is just in time for fucking summer. I hope I've not shown this one yet. I finished it recently, so I don't think I have. This is, this is the shorts that I showed off when I did that collaboration video with Mandible Bone. So if you haven't checked it out, Mandible Bone, uh, tag, I'm going to tag his video down below. Really fucking awesome punk rocker who got in contact with me. Uh, great channel has been around before my channel was around. Asked if I could do, asked if I could, do, we could do a collab on sort of the things that punks and goss wear in the summertime. So go fucking check out that video and that channel. They're both awesome. Um, you'll see me for a little bit. You'll see a whole bunch of really awesome tips and tricks for summer. And this is one of them. Basically, I did the same thing I did with my pants. I took a pair of black cargo shorts and I just patched the fuck out of them. Like, as you can see, you got crass, you got the circle A anarchy symbol, you got blank generation, uh, fucking Richard Hell, you got the distillers, and then like a whole bunch of blank ass, like 
flannel and black patches. And then on the back here, you got Fear the, uh, the Queers Bite Back. You got Nevermind the Bands. You got Days and Days. And then you got the green radioactive symbol. I love these things. I wear them very often. They're nice and comfortable for when it's really fucking hot outside. Where I live, it's... It's not as hot some days where you can still wear your fucking jeans if you want to and you can still wear your vest, but sometimes it is just absolutely fucking blistering hot and so these are a very welcome addition to my wardrobe. And then finally, this is probably the piece of DIY that I've been focusing the most on lately. Damn it. <laughs> and that is a new pair of patch pants. Um, you've seen the ones that I've shown off before. I wore those to my bands for a show. Those are my fucking babies. This is the new addition to the family. Um, so basically it's just like a pair of black slim fit jeans, or it's more like a dark, a very, very dark gray or like a faded black. And so I've really, I've just been fucking adding all that I had to these so far. They're not done, so I'm, you'll be seeing these again. Uh, so basically like on here you got Luna Chicks, you got 1312, Know Your Rights. You got my buddy Max's band from the UK, the fucking AIDS grenades, check them out, they rule. You got Bikini Kill, you got The Cramps, you got Crass, Save the Bees. I love the fucking punk rock bee. He's holding a 40 and he's giving you the fucking finger. I don't know if you can see that, but he's giving you the fucking finger. Uh, I love that. It's one of my best ideas. I love the Save the Bees patches that I've seen. And so I wanted to sort of make my own, have an original idea or like a cartoon because I love cartoons. And then the other leg, you got fucking Torso. Great band. I discovered them mo most recently through the... Um, fucking new noise magazine great fucking hardcore band from i believe california they're fantastic uh singer's got a great fucking voice i love her fucking voice it's like these harsh ass vocals perfect for hardcore i love it uh you got seven year bitch you got misfits i uh love this misfit skull i use a stencil which, which is why it's got the fucking lines in between the eyes came out really well this patch is the only patch on these pants that i didn't make myself i bought this from the Orphan Riot singer Noel when I was when my band was playing a show with them. Great dudes, great music, check them out. I love the patch. Uh, and then down here you got the distillers. And then on the back, I've only got two patches. You've got this, which is Don't Burn the Witch, Burn the Rich, with a little uh, fucking pentagram uh, Molotov cocktail, which I fucking love. I added the pentagram in Sharpie, like fine, fine line Sharpie, because I didn't have like the fucking patience to paint that. And then over here, you got this big ass distiller's patch. Fuck yeah. Uh, I used the uh, the Brody Mohawk sort of like silhouette uh, that you see on a lot of different distiller shit. And then I got the distiller's logo. Two distiller's patches on the same pants. Uh, take it as you will. I fucking love the distiller's. So I guess you can fucking deduce how I feel about that band from these pants. And I was just really fucking excited to make these. And then... Last, fucking certainly not least, is something else that I've been doing a lot of recently that I wanted to show you. This is not really a thing that I've made, it's more of a method that I use, but basically I've been doing a lot of stenciling and I wanted to show you sort of what I do. Basically the way that I make my stencils is that I'll take a really thick ass sheet of paper, or like, you know, cardstock or whatever you call this. It's got this shit on it because I recycled it from where I work, I work in a library, and I ask my boss, do you have any like scrap cardstock that you're not using, and she wheels me out a fucking drawer cart, you know, one of those plastic carts with drawers on it that's like up to my fucking waist. And she's like, take what you want, we're throwing the shit away. And so I took, and I, I took a whole bunch of it, printed the shit out and made uh, fucking stencils. And so these are the stencils that I use for that patch. And then I just, I've been making stencils like crazy on the printer at work before they fucking trash all that shit. So here you got, you got a Frankenfurter, um, Rocky Horror Picture Show, I don't know if you can see that. You got the circle A, anarchy symbol, and a whole bunch of others that I got over there. But basically what I do is that I'll take these and then either with a brush or a sponge brush or like one of those little finger sponges for like stamping, I'll dip that in my paint and then just go like up and down, not necessarily fast, just like lightly touching um, the fabric through the stencil and not like pressing down too hard because that'll make the paint bleed underneath the stencil, but just like a regular rhythmic motion, regularly re-dipping into the paint and make sure that the stencil stays in one place. And then after you finish, after you've gotten the like consistency that you want, pull the stencil away and it looks fucking great. Like a whole bunch of these patches on these pants were stenciled. Like this one, that one was stenciled. Uh, the fucking, the Misfits one was stenciled. Uh, the fucking, the other distillers one, the Crass one, all stenciled. 
because I can't I can't fucking paint that. I can't do that. I don't have that. I don't have that patience. I don't have that detail. So like stenciling, it's an easy way to do it. Just grab yourself a fucking exacto knife and some sheets of cardstock. Print something out onto it, or even draw it yourself if you want to. Because I'm I can do more detail when I'm drawing by hand than if I'm like outlining or freehanding on fabric. So that helps me with detail. So that's how I did that. I had some questions on like the Instagram and TikTok posts that I made about that, about how I did that. And so that's how I fucking did it. Now you can fucking do it. So I hope you enjoy that tip and I hope you fucking enjoyed what I had today. And now I promised you some fucking announcements, didn't I? The first one is that this channel hit 5,000 and it hit on the week that I didn't even post anything. I didn't even fucking post anything that week. I was out because I was busy and you guys got this channel to fucking 5K. That is amazing. That is fucking amazing. I did not expect to get this far when I fucking started. I am blown away. I'm so glad that so many people enjoy what I do. I'm glad that I'm helping people get into the fucking punk movement. It's a great fucking movement with great fucking bands and great camaraderie that you can get from it. I'm so glad that so many of you seem to enjoy watching my shit. And I'm excited to, you know, put more stuff out, see what comes next. And so keep your eyes peeled for an announcement video on how we are going to celebrate the 5K. Uh, I might do another live stream with my girlfriend, like the way I usually do. I might do something else alongside that. You know, I'm I'm coming up with ideas. So if you got any ideas of the, something I should do to celebrate the 5K, uh, my channel reaching fucking 5K, comment them down below. I'm open for ideas because I'm just way too blown away to come up with something concrete right now. But don't worry, I will definitely come up with a way for us to celebrate this because it is a milestone for this channel. And for all of you, thank you so much for tuning into my videos. Second announcement, my band is playing the Milestone. For those of you who don't know, the Milestone is like, between my friends and I, we would probably say that it is the punk venue of punk venues in North Carolina. It's where like, when I was in high school and I would, there would be like my friends who were into punk, they'd always be like, hey, we're gonna see this show at the Milestone. Hey, we're gonna see this show at the Milestone, dude. It is a punk venue in Charlotte um, where you see like great bands and great music. It's a cool little, just area to go and see music and hang out and meet other punks. My band and I are playing the milestone on August 11th. That is a Wednesday. And I understand that some of you might be getting back into either college or high school or you have jobs. And so that doesn't work for you. I'm sorry, but don't fear because we will be playing more shows. We'll be playing weekend shows in different places. We are hoping to maybe get a weekend show at the milestone at some point soon. We got contacted by this band called Harriet RIP. They asked us to do that show with them on that Wednesday. And so we are going to be on at nine o'clock. We have the nine o'clock to 9.45 slot. Uh, and I will be there uh, like an hour before and I'll be staying for like an hour after. So if you want to come up and say fucking hi, if you're coming to the show, definitely please come up and say hi, uh, shake my hand, take a picture, whatever the fuck you want to do. I'm there to hang out. I'm there to see people. I'm there to meet new people and play my band's fucking music. We're super pumped. So lastly, let me say that again because I was really excited there. The Milestone, Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, at 9 o'clock is when we will be on. So that's in Charlotte, uh, Milestone, 9 o'clock. We are super pumped. And I hope to see someone there. You know, like, I, it's just going to be, it's going to be fun. We're going to see people there. We're hoping to get, you know, a good crowd, even on a fucking Wednesday night. And if we can pack it, maybe we'll do another show on, like, a weekend. And so if you can come out, definitely please do. I will see you there. And... Until then, I'll see you on the fucking flip side.